In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this navigation bar using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So to begin, I'm opening up a CodePen project. For this project, I'm only going to use HTML and CSS to make this navigation bar. Right now at the top, I just have a head tag, and within that head tag, I have a link to a font that I'm going to use. So first, I'm going to write all the HTML code, and then I'm going to write the CSS. So for the HTML, I'm going to first write a body tag, and within that body tag, I'm going to make a div that will have an ID of navbar. Within that navigation bar, I'm going to have an unordered list of several items. In that unordered list, I'm going to have several list items that are all links to other pages. But right now, I'll just place the hashtag symbol there as a placeholder. And then I'm just going to name the link. So for that first one, I'm just going to write logo with the intention that that would be a placeholder for an actual logo. And then I'm going to copy this list item and paste it several times. That next one, I'm going to call it about. The next one will be work and the last one will be contact. This is all the HTML code for the project and the rest will be completed in CSS. So in the CSS first, I'm going to write body to reference the body tag. And in body, I'm going to initially reference the font family we are going to use. I'm using Lado for this project. And then I'll write sans serif. Then I will set the margin to zero. And then I'm going to want to set a background color for the whole body. So I'm going to go with a dark UI. So I'm writing background color and then reference this dark color. Then I'm going to reference the ID of navbar. So I'm writing hashtag navbar. And with that navbar, I want the width to take up 100% of the viewport width. So I'm writing 100 VW. I'm going to set an other background color for this navigation bar so it stands out a little bit more from the background. So I'm putting a different color here. And we can see now that the nav bar has a different background color than the body. And then for all of the elements within the nav bar, I want the font weight to be a little bit bolder. So I'm changing it to bold. Then I'm going to add characteristics for this unordered list within that nav bar. So for this unordered list, first I want to remove these dots next to each item. So I'm going to write list style and then write none. So that will remove the dots next to each list item. Then I'm going to set the margin to zero. So then the unordered list becomes flush to the top of the page. And then I'm going to work on how the elements are displayed in the navigation bar. So right now each list item is placed one after another. But we are going to want the elements to align horizontally in one single row. So there are several ways that we can do this, but I find the easiest way to do this is with Flexbox. So for that unordered list, if we just write display flex, the list items automatically go in a row. Because for Flexbox, the native alignment is to have things listed horizontally. So that is why the elements now appear in that one row. But we're going to want to make some modifications so this looks a little bit better. So I know that for this project, I want the about, work, and contact to be on the right side of the page, and I only want the logo to be on the left. So the majority of the content, I want to be on the right side. So I'm going to write justify content and then flex end, which will push all the contents to the right side of the screen. And then within this div, I want the contents to be aligned within the center of it. So then I'm going to write align items and then right center. Next, I'm going to want to add some padding because right now the elements are way too close to one another. So I'm going to write padding, one EM, and then zero. So that will add one EM of padding at the top and the bottom and zero to the left and right. Now I'm going to add some characteristics for the actual list items in here. So within this nav bar, I'm going to reference the list items that are links. 
First, I'm going to want to remove that underline that's native to links, so I'm going to write text decoration none. Then I'm going to change the color of the link, so I'm just going to write color and then white. And then these elements are still too close to one another, so I'm going to write padding, write, and then make it 3EM. So that adds a little bit of breathing room between each element. And then I'm going to set the position to these elements to relative. Next, I'm going to add that bar that will be visible when the user hovers over the link. So the way I'm going to do that is by making a pseudo element and I'm going to use the after property. Pseudo elements allows you to manipulate how content looks on the page without ever disrupting the HTML. This is essentially saying that after every list item that is a link, I want this certain characteristic to appear. When using a pseudo element, you have to include the content tag, even if it's empty. So for this example, mine is actually going to be empty, but you still have to include it in order for it to be visible on the page. Then for this, I'm going to make the position absolute. And then I'm going to also want to display this as block. Now we still don't see anything on the page because we haven't really defined characteristics to make it visible yet. I'm going to add a particular height and width. And I'm just going to set the width as 100% for now. And then in order to see it on the screen, we're going to need to add a background color. And I'm going to choose a pink color that I know I'm going to want to reuse several times throughout the design. So instead at the top, I'm going to declare it as a variable. So I'm writing root and then writing a variable called pink. And then I'm referencing the color that I want to use. I'm referencing that variable by writing var and then dash dash pink. So once I do that, now we can actually see this on the page. So as you can see, after every list item that is a link, there is this pink bar that appears beneath it. It's a little too close to the link, so I'm just going to write bottom and then negative one EM. So it gets pushed down a little bit lower. This is looking really good so far, but I actually want that logo to be pinned to the left of the page. I'm going to reference that first list item. So I'm writing LI and then first child to reference this first list item. And I want this one to behave differently. First, I'm going to set that margin right to auto so it'll be pushed completely to the left of the page. But I am going to want there to be some margin here just like there's some margin right here next to contact. So to push it into place, I'm going to write margin left and then write 3 EM. So this is looking really good so far. We have all of our elements laid out horizontally, and then they each have an after element right beneath it. Now, I only want this bar to be visible when the user hovers over the actual link. So we're going to have to manipulate the properties in order to do that. I'm going to reference this after, but I want to add a hover effect to it. So I'm going to write L I A then a single colon for hover, and then add the double colon for the after, which means that when this element is hovered upon, I want there to be some effect to the after element. So for this after element, I'm actually going to make the width 100%, but for the initial state of the after, I don't want the element to be visible at all, so I'm actually going to modify this width to zero. So now when I hover over the link, the after element goes from zero to 100% instantly. This element does seem rather long, so instead of making 100%, I'm actually going to modify it and make it 60%. So now when I do this, the width looks a little bit better. Next, I'm going to want to add some animation effects so it doesn't automatically go from 0 to 60%. I want there to be some kind of transition that occurs. So to do that, I'm going to go to this after property again, and then write transition. And then I'm going to write all as a manipulate all the properties that we're changing. We're only manipulating the width here, but if we wanted to expand it, it would all behave in the same way. Then I'm going to write ease in out and then specify how long I want this animation to occur. I'm just going to write 250 milliseconds. So now when I hover over it, it actually animates. The last thing I'm going to do is manipulate the color of the link when it is hovered. So in order to do that, I'm just going to again write list and then hover. 
And when the actual list item is hovered on, I also want that color to be pink. So I'm just going to copy this variable that we used earlier and then paste it here. This is looking really good. I just want to add the same transition that we applied to the after element for the actual color of the text. So I'm going to copy that transition and also apply it to that list item. So now when we hover over it, there's actually an animation that occurs. When I increase or decrease the size of the page, the elements stay in their correct place. So that's how you can make a really cool navigation bar using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.